Hey guys, Brendo New Productions here. Welcome to Learning Python, Episode Two. <laughs> I think the name and numbering scheme of this tutorial series is definitely going to change as each episode happens. But anyway, let's dive right into it. So in this episode, I want to talk to you guys about basic types in Python. Specifically, we're going to be talking about ints, floats, strings, and the operators around these types. So let's go ahead and dive right in. We're going to go ahead and open up the Python REPL by typing in Python. And here we are. So as I was mentioning before, the first thing we're going to cover is ints. Now, int is short for integer. And indeed, if you just type int, you'll learn that it is a class in Python. We can learn more about it by typing help int. Uh, and uh, we can see various things about this that aren't so important now. Uh, you get a hint that you can take the absolute value of ints, perhaps add ints, ceiling, float, uh, convert them into floats, floor, greater than or equal, less than or equal, inversions, all of this good stuff is in the help. So after this tutorial, I urge you to read some of this help for both ints and floats and strings so you can supplement your knowledge. I also urge you to experiment around with the concepts we're going to talk about and maybe uh, learn a thing or two. So ints are just integers, which are, are whole numbers without decimals. So one is an int, two is an int, 100 is an int, 100,000 is an int. Indeed, if we type type of one, you'll learn that it's an int. Similarly, type of 100,000 is an int. We can store ints inside of variables. So let's make a new variable and call it foo equals 5. Now we will learn that foo is 5 and the type of foo is an int. So ints are just numbers, right? So let's talk about some of the operators. What can you do with ints? Just like in basic arithmetic, you can add, subtract, compare using greater than or less than uh, you can multiply divide so let's try some of that out what if we type 5 plus 5 well as we'd expect we get 10 10 minus 5 we get 5 how about 10 divided by 2 5.0 now this one's a little interesting we'll have to discuss later uh, how about 2 times 5 10 Nothing surprising here, right? We're just getting, we're adding ints and we are getting new ints. We are subtracting ints, we're getting new ints. Basically, we're operating on ints to get new ints, right? If we type type, type of two times five, we'll see that the result is indeed an int. So those are ints. There's nothing surprising at all. Uh, the syntax is very straightforward. If you're new to programming, this is syntax that will you'll see everywhere. Ints. Now, floats are basically decimal numbers, right? Decimal numbers are a little tricky because technically they can have an infinite amount of digits. In computers, we cannot represent an infinite amount of digits with a limited addressing space in the processor. So the IEEE created a floating point standard, which we use to approximately represent decimal point numbers. It's called floating point because the point can move anywhere, right? In a decimal number, the decimal can be anywhere. So floats are basically decimal numbers. We can try this out. Type of 100.0. This is a float of 100.5. Float, right? We can store floats in variables, just like ints. 100.5, f, type of f. It's float. Nothing is surprising here. Uh, so if you want to represent decimal data, use floats. There's a small caveat with floats uh, that has to do with the fact that we cannot super accurately represent them. 
So, for instance, certain equations that you think would be obvious answers are actually misconstrued by this floating point standard. I'll have a link to some interesting uh, floating point standard trivia in the description. So, just like with ints, you can add floats. 100.5 plus 0 0.3. 100.8, nothing surprising. You can subtract them. 100.8 minus 0 0.3. Oh, well, I, okay. There's 100.05, right? Exactly as we'd expect. We can even take variables and subtract them. F is 100.5. D is 10.2. F minus D, 90.3. What is the type of F minus D? It's a float. So floats. Of course, you can also multiply floats, 100.5 times, times 0 0.3. Now, what happens when you mix types, right? We've learned about ints, we've learned about floats. What happens when you multiply a float by an int? We can even get the type of this. It's a float. So, even though... 100.5 times 2 results in only 201, right? There is no decimal after that. Uh, Python still chooses to represent this as a float. The reason being that 100.5 is a float and 2 is an integer. One of these is more accurate than the others. We can just say that floats are more accurate. There is more precision, right? So, Python chooses to coalesce the result of 100.5 times 2 into a float. In general, if you have floats involved in any arithmetic equation, the result is going to be a float, because it will take the most precise thing. Indeed, if you type 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5.0, the result is a float. You can tell because it has that point zero at the end. However, if you just type 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, the result is an int. It does not need to, quote unquote, upgrade the type of this result. So this is also why in 10 divided by 2, uh, the result is 5.0, right? In division, although these are both ints, we need to represent the decimal pretty much always because of cases like 10 divided by 3, right? We need to have that extra uh, precision in these kind of wacky divisions. So Python has just made the decision to make all results of divisions into floats because of the chance of remainder, right? This is pretty standard. It's pretty expected. Uh, also, I don't know if you noticed, but you can see kind of the wackiness with the inaccuracy of floating point numbers when we do 10 divided by 3. The result is mathematically 3.3333 repeating. However, the floating point rec representation gives us 3.3333355. So that's a little odd. And if you're doing things that really matter, like uh, money exchange rates or super fine accurate measurements you're not going to want to use the floating point standard to represent your data now the final basic data type in python is the string now although it's arguable which data types are basic and which are not the string is representation of characters a sequence of characters now note that if we just have a single character Sorry. If we just have a single character and we type of this, it is a string. There is a kind of debate in programming language design whether or not we should represent a single character as a single length string or a character. However, in Python, there's no such thing as a character type. Uh, there's just strings. If you don't know what that meant, just ignore it. Uh, sorry. So strings are the type of, that just means characters in a sequence, right? So we can have hello, and this is a string. We can have hello123, this is a string. We can have 123, and this is also a string, not to be confused with the integer 123, right? 
Python represents strings in either double quotes or single quotes. Indeed, if we type type hello, we get the result that this is a string. One of the things that Python does is we have these operators on ints and floats, right? We have plus, minus, divide, multiply. And Python tries to be pretty universal with these operators. If you can add a integer, why can't you add a string? You can multiply a float, why can't you multiply a string? So every type in Python is able to be manipulated by these operators. So what happens when you actually add two strings together? Hello plus world. The result is a, a single string, which is a concatenation of both of those strings. What happens if you multiply a string with another string? Times world. All right, so we learned some of the limitations, right? Of course, it doesn't really make sense to multiply a string with a string. What do you expect? There's, there's nothing that really makes sense. However, what happens if we multiply a string with a number? Ah, it's just that string three times. Pretty interesting. What happens if we take a string and subtract another string? This is, again, unsupported. So Python attempts to implement most operators on every single type, but they will not be implemented if the operator does not make sense. For instance, what does subtracting a string from a string mean? One could argue that it means taking away certain characters or for instance if I say hello minus O you know but it's not very clear-cut what this means so the operators are only implemented if it's pretty straightforward similarly if we take a string and divide it what do you think will happen well nothing really makes sense here so Python has chosen not to implement it. An understandable uh, scenario, right? But we can mix data types just like we could with ints and strings. We can mix strings and ints. Hello plus three. Oh. Well, I guess you can't. <laughs> so if you want to add a integer to a string, you need to make sure that that integer is actually a string first. So we put it in quotes, right? And this is no different from the previous example where we added two strings together. So these are the basic types, int, float, and string, and we'll get you by in most programs. However, there are some complex types as well that we'll discuss in the next video. But for now, I urge you to play around. Open the help menus for each different type. Help int, help float, help stir. Read about some of the functions. Read about some of the capabilities. And there's even pretty good online documentation. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this intro to strings, floats, and ints. Come back next time for dictionaries, lists, and tuples.